time and we're talking about snow and and I'm sick and everyone's sick and uh, but it's awesome that you guys are all here um, we actually might have to bring in a couple more chairs um, so if we need some more tables or chairs just let me know Jen um, so if you guys have a chair that you just have your stuff sitting on if you can free that up that would be awesome Jen, do you think we need more chairs? Hey, honey. Okay. Okay, Mike's calling for more chairs. Um, maybe just one more table. Or just some more chairs. We can just put some more chairs in here. So we only have six per table right now. Um, okay, so speaking of treacherous weather, um, Monica called me last night and said, oh my gosh, I'm at the airport and my flight just got canceled. Well, first it was delayed. And I was like, okay, that's no big deal. It's delayed. And she goes, oh, it just got canceled. And I was like, no. And then she said, well, I can, they can get me there by 1045 in the morning, which would get her here at like 1145 out south. So that wasn't going to work. And she said, well, maybe we, I can just zoom in, which would have been, which would have been okay. But then she, she went to bat for us, and she called Renee, and Renee went to bat for us, and they made it happen. So they changed her flight, they changed her airlines, they got her here. She got up at the crack of dawn, so give her a round of applause. But Monica is my Miriam girl crush. Like, I know I, she's probably going to hear me say it a million times. She's heard me say it before. But the first time I saw her speak in, um, on the big stage, I thought, oh, my gosh. Like, I just, I just really related to her. You know, she's a mom of boys. Um, I just loved her energy. I loved her directness. I love how – I just love how direct she is. I love how she, um, she puts things together and she really – you know, lays it out there so everybody can, can, or I can receive it really easily. So, um, I've always been, anytime I hear that she's on a call, it's funny people text me and say, did you hear your girl Monica is going to be on the call tonight? Did you hear your girl Monica is going to do your university tonight? So everybody kind of knows in my world that, you know, Monica is, is my girl crush. So, um, I'm super excited that she's here for for all of you guys. She made sacrifices for her family, so I want you guys to, you know, try to put your phones on silent, turn your phones upside down. Let's give her all of our attention and all of our love from Kansas City. Miss Monica Dawson.
there, I can decide from the, the minute I walked in the door that there are many other volunteers that jump in, and um, I don't know who all's who, so I, I won't embarrass myself and not, I forget to call somebody out, but I know this is not something that's done by just them alone, but um, I don't know if you guys know, but in, in any given market like this, when a leader says, all run the regional, they don't get paid to do it. <laughs> Um, they put their credit card on for the space. So if people show up, great. And if they don't show up, they pay for it out of their pocket. And um, and the burden is on them to find the speakers, to set up, you know, to set up or get somebody to help them set up. So it's a huge thing, and it's usually the most, um, the least appreciated because people just don't know what goes on behind the scenes to execute on that. So I can tell you guys are appreciative because. I didn't even say stand up when everybody was already starting to stand up, so that's really great. So, anyways, um, well, let me get, before I get into the nearing training, for those who, this is the first time we've had the pleasure of meeting, I'll say again, my name is Monica Dawson. Um, I flew in from Dallas, Texas, and um, yes, uh, the flight got canceled yesterday, but it wasn't altogether awful. I, in the interim, landed at the Loretta Cantina Park and had a margarita at 5.30 on Friday. <laughs> I got a quiet dinner of I talking tuna tacos by myself, you know, being a grown-up while my three children were at home getting fed by somebody else. But, but <laughs> Friday night out, you know? So it wasn't awful. But um, anyways, but, uh, so my husband and I live in Dallas. We're parents to three boys, ages 13, 12, and 10 years old. And crazy busy uh, time of life these ages. I actually got started in the direct selling industry when they were six months old, uh, three and four. So they've been doing this with me now for quite a few years. Um, prior to Miriam, my background is in medical sales. Um, started right out of college into uh, medical sales in the wound care industry. And then I, I started selling cosmetic medical devices uh, in 1999 when I was way too young to know what a wrinkle or an age flop looked like. <laughs> I was selling into plastic surgery, dermatology, and in fact, when I started selling is when the whole med spa boom began, and today med spas are everywhere. But this idea of like beauty plus medicine coming together was all kind of happened in the uh, like 99, 2000 time frame. So I love the space of beauty, anti-aging, and wellness. It is, it is the space to be in. Like, if you want to have the inside scoop on the latest and greatest to be, like, young forever, this is the right industry to be in. In fact, we loved it so much that um, a couple years after that, we actually bought a franchise med spa. Um, cost us about 250000 to buy the franchise. Um, we had $50,000 in operating capital that needed to be sitting in the bank. And cost us about twenty thousand dollars a month just to keep the business open. It was in Arizona, and I was in Texas. But I say that that's how much I have wanted ownership in this piece of the pie of beauty and anti-aging that we put up a quarter million dollars. <laughs> and uh, two and a half years later, when we sold it, and we only lost forty thousand dollars in the transaction, I was like, "Oh, it could have been so much worse." So um, I, I would credit the gray hair that I have today, which I hope I've effectively covered up with that this powder, because I have to color like every two weeks, shamefully. Um, I would credit it back to the two and a half years we owned the med spa. So anyways, um, but we love the space. My husband still is in medical, cosmetic medical sales. He sells uh, radio frequency and uh, body monitoring devices that sell anywhere from 80000 to 180000 sells thermal fillers and injectables, even this cool thing called threads where they literally insert, like, surgical threads into your face and do a facelift with it, sells those, sells micro-needlings, which sounds exactly like what it is, which is needles go into your face and they do micro-punctures of the skin and then when they add it with this thing called PRP and give you a vampire facial, then you're going to look really young. I say all of that because <laughs> I have a real appreciation for what people are willing to pay for and do to stay and look young. And six years later, I have not found anything in the industry inside of direct sales or outside that compares to Miriam. Period. Bar none. And, uh, and I know, I mean, I know this space, yeah. And I do, I know this space very, very well. 
And, um, and I really just, there isn't anything but hold the candle to Miriam, which is why six years later I'm still here and not going anywhere. The irony is I've changed jobs about every three years since I can remember having a job. And this is the longest I've ever done anything other than marriage. So <laughs> 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 that's pretty awesome, you know. So like my marriage, my children, and my Miriam career are the longest standing institutions in my life. So that's a good vote of confidence for Miriam. Um, I actually got into the direct selling industry after my third son was born. I left the medical sales arena, decided to become a stay-at-home mom. Um, I didn't have to work. We have a beautiful house in Dallas. I have a full-time nanny. Um, I mean, I'm kind of a, a spoiled little brat a little bit in that respect. I didn't really need to work. And uh, about eight months later, somebody handed me a nutritional product, and I fell in love with it. And she's like, well, you can tell people about this and get paid. I'm like, duh. That's so easy. I, I love talking about what I love. So this idea that I could do that and I could take hobby hours and create income in my hobby as opposed to create an expense with my hobby. I don't know how many of you have friends that do things like scrapbooking. Anybody have friends that do scrapbooking? I mean, like, really? We're going to spend $500 in on a weekend retreat and $250 on materials and then go sit and glue pictures to a page for three days, I'm like, shoot me now, please. <laughs> please, somebody just order a shot of like, like, really? And so I, that was, I was like, I'm either going to do that, or I'm going to redecorate every room, and then when I finish, I'm going to come back and redecorate it again, or I'm going to go do something and make some money instead. My husband was like, please, <laughs> go, go make money. And so that's what got me into this industry. I, I wasn't trying to, you know, build a brand new career. I certainly wasn't trying to you know, get to the top of the pay plan. I wasn't trying to get to a point where I can speak in front of you at all. I just was like, listen, I love my kids, but I like something different just for me. And if it can make me money instead of cost me money, that's a win-win. And so that's what drove me into the industry. Um, and that was in, let's see, 2008. And um, I just started as a hobby. I ended up creating more than hobby money. And something funny happens when the checks that come in start to have a comma inserted, that it goes from like, oh, this is just your fun money to now, it's over, let's see what you did, you know? So a secret to the people, ladies in the room who are trying to create some hot and shoe money, just keep it under the comma mark, and then you can have it, you know? And so um, when the checks started having a comma in it, my husband got interested, and I ended up running a trip with that company, and um, on that trip met people that were normal, regular, everyday people, making tons of income. I mean, in some cases, six figures a month. I thought, stop. Is that an option? I mean, nobody told me that was on the menu. And so um, I got really excited. And on that trip, we started brainstorming and dreaming about being able to create life-changing income. And so we, on the plane home, no joke, had the napkin from our drink and the table folded down and started putting numbers on the little napkin of how, what do we need to have in the bank? for you to quit your job and do this with me full time. Like, that's how much my vision had grown. The next day that we returned from our trip, at 8 a.m. in the morning, my husband got a phone call. Bear in mind, he had a, a management level position in a medical aesthetic company, a national role with the company. He was one of the biggest rainmakers in the company. The VP was one of our best friends, and his brother was the owner. They had not hit their number three quotas in a row, but, but we knew heads were about to roll, but not his. I mean, the VP is his best friend, and the owner is his brother. I mean, like, everybody's going to go before he goes. And he got a call at 8 a.m. the next morning and said, hey, we've done some restructuring. Your position's no longer available. We love you, but we don't have any work for you. And it was nowhere on our radar at all. We had not been saving for it. That was not why I started a plan B. But all I can tell you is the second that happened, I was grateful that we had started a plan B because the minute you need your plan B, it's too late to start. <laughs> and the world has changed even since that time. I mean, that was now how many years ago? Seven years ago or so? Um, maybe a little more. And since that time, I think there's um, a lot of people that would agree that the days of having one solo income stream are in the rearview mirror. What was a temporary... A uh, dip in the economy was a complete financial reset for most people. And it's amazing to me what I've seen happen in the direct selling industry over the past seven, eight, nine years. 
in terms of how widely accepted it is, how more and more professionals um, that have uh, careers and titles are coming in, both for tax shelter purposes, both for diversification of income stream purposes. I mean, people who still get caught up with, is this a pyramid? I think you're in another decade because you have so missed the boat that you don't understand the power of the industry that we live in today. And so um, we are huge fans of the industry. Now, I actually got a phone call about Miriam right when the company launched. I happened to live about 15 minutes, 12 if I'm speeding and late to present, from the corporate <laughs> office. Not that I ever do that. And not that I ever fly by somebody with an earring sticker on their car. Okay, so maybe. Um, so anyways, I, uh, but I got a phone call right when the company launched. Fortunate, right? Um, it was from a guy out of Louisiana with a background in insurance. He's the last person on the planet that could tell me anything about Scan. I mean, me, because I was a snob about it, right? So he calls, he says, oh, this company, blah, blah, blah. I said, sure, good luck to you. Call me in a year if you're still in business. That was it. He went on to send me emails, text messages, begged for me to meet him every time he came through town, sent me a box with a bottle, of magazine information. I opened it, was a little surprised that it looked so professional for a startup, closed it, and put it under the bed. And it sat under the bed. He gets sent it to me in January. I didn't pull it out again until October. During that time, he went on without me. <laughs> he didn't wait for me to be successful. He just went on without me. Every single time he helped somebody earn the iPad, he sent me a photo. Every single time he helped somebody earn the car, he sent me a photo. Every single time he achieved a new rank, he sent me an email. Every time he came through town, and at no point did I go, this guy is annoying. I really honestly did not. And I really want to make that clear because I think as we talk about, you know, go through the process here, many times people go, I don't want to bug people. I don't want to bother them. And the irony is that he never bothered me because his tenacity and conviction just said to me he really believed in what he was doing. More importantly, he believed that I would be successful at it. And he was like, I love you too much to let this go. That was the message he sent. It was clear to me. And I wasn't responding. I wasn't acknowledging that I even got his messages. I would delete them. Okay. So as far as he knew, they were falling on deaf ears, but he didn't give up. It was in October of that year, finally, after really watching the company progress and realizing this thing might actually stay, that um, my husband went into one of his doctors, actually in Oklahoma, that is a cosmetic doctor, and my husband's medical company had just launched a skincare line. And I thought, geez, you too. Like, everybody wants me to sell skincare. The irony is that summer I had another company, not in the direct selling industry, reach out and say, hey, we're launching a skincare line. Would you, you know, come on board and help us build a sales group? I had another friend of mine who owns a big skincare company in California, said, hey, we just lost a regional manager in your region. You want to come out of retirement and become a regional manager? I'm like, no, no, no. I mean, I don't understand. I got to say no to selling skincare a many times. The fifth, no, no. <laughs> so when John goes, hey, we just launched a skincare line, I'm like, whoop de doo you know? <laughs> Golly. And so he goes in to talk to his doctor about the skincare line. The doctor goes, I have my skincare. Guess what he pulls out? Bottle and earring. He says, this is my skincare line of choice for my medical practice, but I'm going to retire with the money I'm making outside of my practice. Hey, their corporate headquarters is right down the street from where you guys live. You need to take a look at things. It's huge. When John called me, I, could, I still get chills to this day because that was, that was the day. And when he called me, I was like, please just tell me it's not that box under the bed. Like, if anything <laughs> in the box that's been haunting me under the bed for 10 months, I don't know why I didn't throw it away. And so I pulled the box out. I'm, so, I'm going into this story because this is the real world how people get recruited. I mean, this is 10 months of, in the making. Okay. So I, I pulled the box out. I start going onto the internet. I'm Googling. Miriam is a scam. <laughs> I'm like just validating that I had made the correct decision 10 months prior. So I'm like, it's a scam. Couldn't find anything to prove that it was a scam. So then I started asking people about it. Have you heard of this Miriam thing? I said it to my mom, who's an esthetician, while she's giving me a facial. She's the most, a lover with all my heart, the most negative person you're ever going to meet. I'm like going to her for her to bash it. I'm like, please validate me. I start to tell her what it is. She goes to the website, stops the video a minute and a half in and goes, can you get it to me? 
I'm like, stop, stop, don't tell me. She, she literally chased me down for a week to get her a sample. She's like, you have the inside connection, right? Get me a sample. I'm like, Mom, you seriously, I needed you to tell me it's crap, you know? <laughs> then I meet with another lady who actually um, was the sales rep for a local skincare company, really respected brand in our area, and, but she worked directly for the manufacturer, knows the ingredients, knows the industry. And she's talking about how she had just gotten laid off, and, and I'm thinking about Miriam, and I said, have you heard of this Miriam thing? And she says, I have. I said, what'd you hear? She said, I hear it works. She says, they say it works. I'm like, who's they? Give me a name. I want a name. I want one person to tell me it works. So I start telling her what I know about it. She grabs my hand across the table. She goes, listen, you go find us a team. You get signed up. I'm going to sign up underneath you. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I needed you to tell me it's hocus pocus. So now I've got my mom breathing down my neck and Linda Barnes breathing down my neck. Because they're both texting me going, are you in? Are you going to get me the stuff? I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing it. So then I actually ended up meeting. I call Steve Lee. Who knows who Steve Lee is? Okay, so he's many of your top of the lineup line. He's a longtime friend of mine. I didn't call the guy back who contacted me. I called Steve Lee. I'm like, don't tell him I'm calling you. Is this crap? I mean, like, tell me the truth. Is the product real? Is the company real? Do they have any money? I mean, you know, I'm asking all the questions. He says, I'm flying through Dallas. I'll meet you at the airport. I'll give you some product. This thing's the real deal. I said, okay. I meet him at the airport. I mean, I'm not looking incognito. You know, meet him at the airport. He comes running out of security. He gives me a stack of 10 magazines and a bottle. He goes, smile, click. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not memorializing this with a photo. I'm not going to do it. I'm not doing it. 48 hours later, I called. I said, sign me up. <laughs> but don't tell anybody. <laughs> And uh, I went to my first regional like this, and as I'm checking in at the counter, I, I'm standing in line, and turns around a nurse from a dermatologist's office that I knew. I go, Christy Bunyan, what are you doing here? She's like, what are you doing here? It's like a secret, dirty secret. <laughs> I sit down in the meeting, and the girl in front of me turns around and said, another esthetician from a plastic surgeon's office who goes on to tell me she put the product on her face. She had eczema on her hands. She actually was on medical leave because couldn't do facials because she had eczema on her hands and in putting it on her face her eczema went away. She's like showing me her hand. Look at my hands. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm like, I'm in, but I'm sort of not in. And we get to the end of the month in October. I'm in, but I'm kind of dabbling. I start getting the calls from Steve Lee. You need to earn your iPad. I'm like, back off. I'm barely doing this. <laughs> That's how I'm like about right. <laughs> Then I went to my first event. So I was sort of like a toe in the water. I went to my first event. It was in um, Sacramento. Um, and was it Sacramento? It was Southern California. Um, but I, no, it wasn't San Diego. It was before that even. Anyway, I, I think, where, where's Disney? And and I'm I'm like, okay. And, and I know it was, because by that point, my husband had been unemployed for a few years. We were financially, like when I say strapped, most people go, well, like, your things are tight. I'm like, no, like, every credit card is maxed out already. I've already borrowed $50,000 from my brother-in-law. We've already cashed in our 401k, and we've got money in the bank to pay the mortgage through January, and it's October 31st. And that's it. <laughs> there ain't no more we order. So I'm financially strapped. So I get a girl to go with me so I can split the hotel room with her because I couldn't afford to go, but what my sponsor told me is you can't afford not to go. Because it's going to give you a six-month head start on the people that don't go. I'm like, I need every advantage. Because I already had the big kid under my bed for nearly a year. So I'm freaking out. <laughs> so, so I go to the event, thinking I'm just going to dabble. And over a series of two and a half days, hearing people's stories, hearing the science, just story after story. What the stories? Something kind of snapped in me. And I realized, this is huge. And this could change my life. And this could change the life of a lot of people. And Lord, I have no idea how I'm going to do this because I don't have the energy for it. But I knew I had to do it and I couldn't dabble. I had to go all out. And I came back from that event and literally on the way at the airport, um, coming home, calling people. By the end of that month, I had qualified for my car. By the end of February, I hit executive. By the end of I'm sorry, by the end of December, I hit executive. By the end of February, I hit regional. By the end of May, I hit entity. 
I was the girl who wouldn't respond to you. <laughs> I wouldn't return a text mail, a text message, email, or phone call. I refused to meet with people. It took a year for me to really be even interested in taking a look. And when I joined, I was still mostly not in. I was a prospect with a position. That's all that I was. It wasn't until my first major event that like, the light went on. And that is such a normal um, story in our business that if you're that person, you're, you're probably like, me too. But if you're talking to anybody right now that hasn't said yes, I just want to encourage you, you're just getting started. You know, So um, it's been an incredible, incredible journey with Ethereum. It's not been easy. Um, it's a simple business, but it's not an easy business. But we have had an incredible time at it. And where I look at what's happened in our lives over the last five and a half years on this journey, um, you know, I hear people all the time go, it's not about the money, it's the relationships. And it is. It is about the relationships. We've made some incredible friendships. It's about who you become. And it is about who you become. I've changed as a person. I'm not the same person I was five and a half years ago. But can we just be honest? I mean, I'm not doing this for, like, a volunteer. There's money here. <laughs> and the money has made a difference. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, we've been able to dig out of mountains of debt over the last five and a half years. We've been able to recoup our savings and start building our 401k again. We've got a really nice 401k building. We've paid off um, half of our first house. We bought a lake house. We've helped retire my mother. Sent her on trips around the world. I mean, yeah, it really can be about money, and that's not like a dirty phrase. <laughs> because it has it's been life-changing. Um, it's really changed it. And what I'm excited about is in my life, and I see it in the lives of so many people, their Miriam experience, training, personal development, and income have been seeds. Like, it's not about the seed itself. It's about what you can grow when you plant that seed. And so it's not just about getting to a level or an income or paying off. It's, it's so much more than that. It becomes a seed of possibility for your future. And so it has been a really fascinating, eye-opening experience. And I've never had... Where did I put that dark clicker? I know it's like here, right there somewhere. Oh. Um, and, and I've never had this kind of success at... at any other. This is not my first direct selling company. It's my second, technically my third, but there was one in between that I'm going to call a rebound relationship. It was, <laughs> it was just a mistake, and I knew it the second I signed up. I was like, this is a mistake. So, anyway, you can recover from those two. 